Hello and welcome. Uh, this is one of a series of videos about the way in which the Charity Commission regulates charities in the UK. Um, I'm James Sinclair-Taylor, I'm one of the partners in the Charity and Social Business team and Rachel Casterman here with me today uh, is one of my colleagues. Um, so we're going to be looking at uh, what triggers um, Charity Commission concern about you. So there are 180,000 charities and clearly they don't spend their time looking at everyone. So what we're looking at today is what happened, what is likely to uh, cause them to take an interest in you. So Rachel, what would you say the main reasons were? So there's quite a lot of different reasons actually that the Charity Commission can start looking at a charity. So it might be information that the charity is given to the Commission themselves, so that might be a serious incident report that they've made or some information in the charity's accounts that they've filed with the Charity Commission. Um, it could be reports that third parties have sent to the Charity Commission, so for example complaints from the public or from someone else. Um, it could be a report from another regulator like the police. And then also the accountants themselves sometimes have a duty to report things to the Charity Commission. And um, we do see quite often the Commission approaching charities after they've read something in the media. So if there's a negative story about a charity in the news, it's quite often the charity will then hear from the Commission, kind of asking for some more information about what's happened. And then finally, the Commission is actually a very proactive regulator, so sometimes they will actually approach a charity directly just because they are aware of some issue that might be affecting that particular charity's work, so if they work in a high-risk area, for example, so that might be another reason that they get involved. Right. Um, my understanding is the Commission does quite a lot of m uh, monitoring of the media. Um, it's, so are you saying that uh, anything in the media might give rise to some sort of uh, regulatory approach by the Commission? Well, I'd say if it's anything negative, um, probably the charity should be at least open to the possibility that the Commission might approach them. Um, the Commission is very, very concerned, particularly in recent years, about the issue of public trust and confidence in charities. So for that reason, they're, they're always kind of if there's anything which could reflect badly on the reputation of a particular charity or reflect badly on the sector as a whole or even on the Charity Commission, they're very anxious to be making sure that they're taking actions in response to that. So if a charity has any indication that there's going to be some kind of negative news story about them, it's really important to act very quickly to try and resolve the issue that's happened as far as you can, um, to prepare any kind of PR or press response that you might need if it does come into the press and then also being prepared to potentially submit a serious incident report to the Commission so that you can be on the front foot once they do become aware of what's happened. Right. Complaints is another obvious reason why the Commission might um, take an interest in there. Uh, is there anything charities can do to try and reduce the likelihood that there will be complaints to the Commission? Well, I suppose the, the first obvious point is trying to have generally good procedures and practices in place to try and prevent issues from coming up in the first place, um, which is quite an obvious one, um, but also having a really good complaints procedure because normally the first step that someone will take if they're unhappy with your charity is approaching you directly about it and it's only really when they haven't had a satisfactory resolution from the charity that they would tend to go to the Charity Commission. So it's really important to make sure that you do have that procedure and that all staff are aware of what they should do when a complaint comes in so that it can be managed properly. Um, the other thing just to mention is that we often, when we're talking about complaints, we think of them coming from third parties or from the public, but actually the Commission did a thematic review of its complaints that it received back in 2020. And the first learning point from that review was that actually, and I think the words they use were, people who complain are usually people you know. So supporters, beneficiaries, it might be members, volunteers, staff members, trustees. And those people tend to complain about issues that have really affected them personally. So as well as looking at your public complaints procedures and your fundraising complaints procedures, it's also really important to be looking at internal things, so grievances and whistleblowing, that type of thing. Well, you mentioned whistleblowing. I've noticed that the Commission uh, uh, has got a special whistleblowing helpline and that numbers using it have doubled, so that's clearly an important issue. Um, uh, the, the, the other issue I think that, uh, that comes to, uh, to mind is on complaints is that the, one of the first things the Charity Commission would do if they take an interest in you is look at your website and see if they could see uh, the complaints procedure uh, really prominently there. So I think that's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you mentioned uh, regulatory action being triggered by your, uh, the submission of accounts to the Commission or perhaps from the auditors. How, how does that happen? 
So the first point is about the auditors actually making reports themselves. And lots of charities and trustees are quite surprised when they hear that that can happen. So auditors have various duties to report things. So the first one is if they, when they're looking at your, your documents, if they find something that they see as a matter of material significance and there's some guidance about what that includes and um, they have to make a report to the charity commission so they have no choice about it so that could be things related to dishonesty and fraud failures of internal controls governance failures um, criminal or unlawful activity safeguarding issues things like failing to manage conflicts of interest um, if unauthorized payments have been made to trustees or people connected to them so it's those kinds of issues that the auditors are going to be looking at and potentially reporting if they find them. And um, the other type of report is if there's a relevant matter of interest. So that's something which isn't as serious as this matter of material significance. So they don't have to report it, but they may report it. And in the guidance that's given to auditors, they're told, when in doubt, report it. So there can be other things that aren't so serious that could still be reported to the commission. And um, there was a situation recently I helped a client with where their auditors had changed and there was an issue which the old auditors hadn't picked up on and the new auditors identified when they did the first audit and it was related to payments that had been made completely by accident that fell slightly outside the charity's objects and also some payments that went to trustees and connected people without getting the proper authority. So the auditors said to the charity, you know, this this falls within the guidance, we're going to have to report this to the Charity Commission. So we helped them to kind of resolve the issue, make sure it didn't happen again, but also to do a serious incident report to the Commission to kind of be on the front foot um, when they received that report from the auditors. So it's something that, that does happen. Yes, you mentioned serious incident reports. Am I right in believing that even if you've already, as a charity, made a serious incident report, the accountants will report it again uh, in, their, in, in their input to the Commission? Yeah, exactly, because it's their duty. They would still have to do their own report as well. And clearly the Commission gets annually the filed accounts of the charity. Uh, is that going to create any sort of likelihood of uh, Charity Commission interest in a charity? Yeah, it absolutely can. Um, so the first thing to mention is that if you repeatedly fail to file your accounts, the Charity Commission will put you in its class action of double defaulter charities, which basically means charities that have failed to file their accounts two years out of the previous five years. So they'll give you a warning before they do that, but if you still fail to file your accounts, you will then have an inquiry essentially opened into you as part of this class action. Um, and if they engage with you for that reason, they will also be on the lookout for other potential governance issues because they do see a failure to file accounts as potentially a sign that something's not quite working within the charity. Um, the other thing is just generally when they receive the accounts, they do read them um, and if they do see something in there that doesn't quite add up or that seems unusual or something that doesn't seem right, they will kind of ask more about it. And if we look at the compliance reports that were published in 2021, eight of those reports actually the Commission had got involved because there was something to do with the accounts. So it, it does happen, it's, it's not unusual for that to, to happen. Right. And uh, I, I'm aware that sometimes, and indeed some of one of my clients, uh, has had a proactive visit from the Charity Commission, uh, which wasn't triggered by any of these things. How does that situation arise? So this is the, the point about if there's something high risk that the Commission just generally thinks might apply to your charity. So, you know, last year one of my clients, for example, was approached by the Charity Commission because they work in Afghanistan, and when the Taliban kind of took control, the Commission approached them and said, you know, there's obviously a changing situation there, there could potentially be issues for, for how you work, we know that you make grants to organisations that operate in Afghanistan, so how have you responded to this? And they asked for copies of policies and procedures relating to risk management, due diligence, monitoring, um, to, to just check that everything was fine. And again, they weren't saying the charity had done anything wrong, and they didn't actually take any regulatory action of any kind apart from giving advice. But if they had identified something that they thought was a problem, then they could potentially have opened a compliance case there. Yes. Well, I, I had an um, interesting case in another field, in this case the social care charity, where they did a quite detailed compliance visit because they'd issued a regulatory alert. And our, my experience is that increasingly when they issue a regulatory alert, um, they may follow it up with compliance visits to see if you've complied properly with it. Um, I wonder uh, whether there's anything else you'd like to say, Biz. No, I think generally the, the learning point from this is just 
governance is important and it is important to understand the Charity Commission's guidance, to read those regulatory alerts when they come out and just to make sure that you're getting training. You know, if you're a larger charity, you should be doing a governance review every three years just to make sure that you really are on top of all of these things because the last thing you want is the Charity Commission kind of knocking on your door and asking lots of questions and and raising problems. So really important to be on top of all of these things. I'd I'd emphasise that point on um, having it ready beforehand because when they do a regulatory visit, they often come on relatively short notice. And we find when we do governance reviews that getting uh, what people's ducks lined up in a row means that if they do get a regulatory review, uh, they're not phased by it because they're able to show compliance. So um, if any of you have any questions that you'd want to raise with us, our contact details uh, are on this vlog. And um, I hope you'll find this and the other um, series of vlogs that we're doing on the Charity Commission useful. Your feedback is always very welcome. And please um, do feel free to phone at any time. Goodbye and thank you. Thank you.